today. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? I can. You sound good. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen here. Perfect. First try to it. It appears to be even the right screen. I see trade big momentum moves daily. Great. Let me know. All right, you want I'm going to. Gonna... Get All right, go for it. And bless you, Kelly, in the control room. I just heard that sneeze over here. Uh, you saw yours, Melissa. I'll get out of your way. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Crazy day again in the market. Lots of volatility this year in 2022, and actually that has made for some exciting trading days. This week is no exception to that. We're going to continue to see that even tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday, and the Fed rate decision comes out tomorrow. Of course, it's probably going to be a quarter percent bump in rates. That will undoubtedly have some type of market reaction, but I think that the market is expecting a quarter percent bump. Uh, but I think the market's going to look for really what the Fed chairman says specifically about after tomorrow, going into the second half of 2022, because obviously we've had a lot of issues. The market's been selling off since the beginning of the year, uh, and there's a war going on with Russia and Ukraine. So it'll be a very wild day tomorrow, I think, in the markets. But overall, looking for momentum is what I try to do each and every single solitary day. I do tend to err to the short side first. In other words, I prefer to short. I found a niche actually not just in doing momentum, which is the topic of today's lecture, but also in shorting. I will go long. I'm happy to go long. Actually, we had a trade. We're going to go over this chart in here. We went long. We did calls in CVX. That's an oil stock. It's Chevron, but I do prefer to short. So we've had a lot of nice shorts this year, mainly because the market's been selling off and lots of stocks have been selling off with it. So if you have any questions, let me just see if I can pull up the chat here. Chat. Okay, there's the chat. If you have questions, you can ask me as we go along and I will try to answer them today. If you have questions afterwards, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also feel free to call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And you can also watch me on television. I appear on pretty much every single network, uh, mostly Fox News and CBS News to discuss markets. And again, this has been a wild ride this year. And I don't see it changing anytime soon. I think pretty much the market is going to continue to be volatile like this into at least the summer period of 2022. So let's talk about momentum. Why is playing momentum advantageous? Because you can make a lot of money with momentum. In other words, think about it. If you take a position in a stock, say you want to go long and the stock rallies 10 cents, well, you could be up a little bit of money. Say you have a thousand shares and you're up a hundred bucks with a 10 cent gain. That's all well and good, but wouldn't it be a lot better if you took a thousand shares in something, bought a stock, and it rallied a dollar? You'd be up a thousand dollars. Okay, a dollar is a bigger move than 10 cents. So obviously, any single thing that we do, it doesn't matter what stock I'm looking at, what stock I'm trading, I'm trying to make dollars, not pennies. I'm looking for momentum, I'm not scalping. Okay, so we're looking for big moves. That's how one individual trader, like someone like you and every single person that's here can make money. Unless you have millions and millions and millions of dollars, you're not gonna be able to make lots of money trading unless you get big moves of momentum. And by the by, even people that have huge accounts, big hedge funds, big professional traders, they still want momentum too. They're not looking to scalp. They're looking to play the long game or the big move. That big move could be a day, could be a couple of days, it could be a couple of weeks, could be a couple of months. But either way, everybody that trades that wants to make any kind of money at all wants to have a bigger move instead of a small move. I think traders tend to be satisfied with small gains or scalp things with small gains because they're so afraid of losing and they're so used to losing that they just get so scared and they're afraid of holding something to get a big move. But this is really how you can make money in the market. And again, so let's talk about momentum here. This is a chart of the QQQ. He's going back. In fact, I'm going to go back here to last year. Okay, we're in November 2021. Hard to believe it's, it's March, halfway through March here. We are March 15th. So this was November 20. Second, 2021, that was the last time the QQQs made a brand new all-time high. Hard to believe. November, December, January, February, March, four and a half, five months ago. Really, really hard to believe considering the move the market made in 2021 to the upside. 
We attempted a new high in December. It failed, okay? And then we also tried it again at the beginning of 2022, didn't work out. So the momentum, I'm just looking here, we're in January, get the drop, boom. This is into February-ish, okay? Early March, here we are now. We have been what? We have been selling off. Again, you don't have to be exact here. Take it to the right. See where we are roughly. This is, again, back at the beginning of the year. Start out the year and where we fall in front. And again, we broke that area yesterday. We were like around 317 and change in the QQQs. So that's quite a dip. Quite a dip to start out this calendar year. I know we rallied today. I don't have that bar in here but it wouldn't make a hell of a beans a difference. We still have had a sell off to the downside. So the momentum has been to the downside for the market this year. And I said the overall market for the ETF for the, for the NASDAQ, it's a QQQs. Let's look at another one here, talking about momentum, PayPal. We did a bunch of nice trades in this guy too. Again, stock had earnings here. Again, look where the price was before the earnings around 180. Gap down here on the earnings. We're gonna talk about gaps in a minute. Got a sell off, boom. So from right before the earnings, 180, to be down here lost basically almost half its price within two months, not even, a month and a half. So again, the momentum is what? First of all, it's there, it's real, it's big, it's not nothing, it's, it's a lot, lot and it's, it's also, also to the downside. downside. Okay? So, so you, you could have made money shorting PayPal, PayPal that's, that's what, what we did. did. You, you could have made money doing puts in PayPal, PayPal. That's, that's what we did. did. Same thing with, with the market. market. Okay. okay, so the, the bottom line is that you can make a lot of money playing momentum, and that's the reason to do it. That's the reason to do it. And quite frankly, it makes it a lot of fun trading momentum. Again, it's not that much fun if you are risking a thousand dollars and making a hundred bucks. Kind of doesn't really make any sense to do it. Think about it. It's like risking a hundred dollars and then getting that with a dollar profit. Kind of silly. Do you know what I'm saying? So the idea, again, is not to make pennies. The idea is to make dollars. That's how you're gonna get somewhere with this. That's how you're gonna get ahead. So learning what to do is very important when risking your own money if you wanna trade the market. And I think a lot of people will come to webinars like today, many, many lectures, lectures and speakers today will watch free videos and that's all well and good. But at, at the end of the day, you won't know what to do unless you really learn how to do it. And that does mean learning from someone, you can call that person a mentor, an educator, a teacher, but someone that has a specific way or method that they look at stocks or the market or how to trade. And so you have a backdrop, a foundation for why you were taking the trade in the first place. And I think that's something that many traders lack. They're used to doing things or trying bits and pieces of things all over the place, and they never really stay on top of one thing or never really learn to get good at one particular thing. I started trading at the end of 2008 I did not know what I was doing. I took one class. At that time, it was expensive, but you know, looking back, I, I got a good foundation for how to trade, but I didn't learn how to make money. After that, I decided to teach myself how to trade, and it took me about three years to develop my own system, which was a very long and hard road for me because I used real money to trade while I was developing the system, so I was losing at the beginning. And again, it was a back and forth process. And when you come to me, if you want to learn from me, if you decide at the end of the seminar today you want to do that, you're, you're paying me for my information and my time to learn what took me three years. I think when people are all over the place with their trading choices and decisions, it becomes more gambling than a thought out process. And for me, when I trade and make a decision, I never think I'm gonna lose. Does that mean that every trade that I take works? No, but I never believe that a trade that I take, when I take the position and risk money, I never think it's going to lose. Otherwise, I wouldn't take it. So I call it 100% conviction. I believe it's going to work. Again, I go in with that mentality, with that thought process of an understanding of what I'm doing. I put the risk on. You can't risk more than you can afford. Put the risk on, and that's how I trade. And again, my win ratio is around 80%, give or take. We'll talk about that later. But if you have an attitude where you're gambling, where it's a 50-50, this type of market, especially since the beginning of the year, is really chopping you up. You're back and forth, back and forth, going long, killing it, shorting it, killing it, back and forth. And again, look for this to continue. This is going to continue past March into April, into the summer. And again, even the Russia-Ukraine conflict, while many people think this, this is over, uh, I, I, I say not so fast, not so fast. I think inflation's gonna continue, gas prices are gonna continue to go up, and I think the crisis that's happening overseas is going to continue. And I also think it's gonna affect overall, it's going to affect what's happening in the markets, okay? 
And, you know, that's just the... That's just basically the world that we live in. Everything is so, so, so interconnected right now. We're all so interconnected. And, you know, something could happen overseas while we're asleep. While we're asleep and then all of a sudden you get up in the morning and you could be in a position and it's upside down, especially if you're in a swing trade or something like that. You know, when I'm doing options, and we'll talk about them too, I'm in a fixed risk position, which means I have a fixed risk. I can't lose any more even if it goes back against me. If you risk $1,000 in an option, you can't lose more than that or whatever it happens to be. That's the nice thing about options. It's the, the stop basically is the trade position or is the risk. So anyways, let's talk about 2022 versus 2021. So here we are, the SPY. This is a chart of SPY. Again, going back to the beginning of 2022, we did make a brand new all-time high here in the SPY at the beginning of the year. We did, actually. Uh, then we dropped off. And here was all into January with the sell-off. And then we have all into the February with this sell-off and so on and so forth. And here we are at the beginning of March. So again, we actually did make a new high in the SPY at the beginning of the year. We did not in the Qs and we didn't in the Diamonds. Okay. Uh, let me just see here. Okay. So, is it possible to work full-time and trade and make money on the side too? The answer is yes. So, some people are trading with me, trading full-time. Some people are trading with me and they're working full-time and trading on the side. I think that if this is something you want to do full-time, you have to find a way to transition doing it. Maybe that's doing options while you're at your job working. Put the position on, put a sell order as a day order, cancel order. If it hits, get, gets you out. And my classes are on the weekends, so if you're working full-time, you can learn in the weekends as well. But when I started trading, my idea, my whole philosophy, the reason I began was because I wanted a new career. I was doing mortgages at the time. So it is possible, it may be hard work to make a transition like that. But I think if nothing else, this past two years has really taught people how, you know, being self-sufficient, working for yourself, actually is very, very, very important when you're in charge of your own money and you're in charge of your own choices. Um, and if you're someone that wants to trade, if you're very entrepreneurial, you understand that it is important to be in control of your own finances. And a lot of people are getting scared with that right now, specifically because of the sell-off in the market, particularly if they have money invested in their 401k or the retirement account. You see the drop off, like I said, since the highs. But overall, the market has been bullish for the last two years, and really even going back to 2016 when Trump was elected. We screeched up higher from 2016, if you think about it, really, for in the five-year period from 2016 to 2021. But now we're in a period of inflation. Things are changing. Things are getting different. The idea of making extra money is actually something that appeals to people from all walks of life, no matter what you do. It's interesting. I always ask people, what do you do for a living? They come and they take my class. I have people from all walks of life, teachers, uh, housewives, nurses, truckers, dentists, doctors, accountants, a veterinarian, people that do all kinds of things, people that have never traded before, people that have traded before, people that want to come and learn what I do. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're from, where you're living, or what your background is. I think that you can do it. I think that you can do it. Again, it doesn't mean it's not going to be work to learn it until you learn it, but you still can do it. But you need a strategy in order to make money in the market. You need a strategy really to spot momentum beforehand. So again, you know where the money is going to flow. And when I'm saying momentum, I'm saying where the money is going to go because the money creates the momentum, okay? If $2 million, uh, $2 million wants to come in and buy something like Apple or Facebook or the market, it's going to push it up, okay? So that creates the move up, which is the money, which is buying, which is moving the price higher, okay? A lot of people right now are buying the dip. What happened to the market today? We were talking about this earlier, don't have the bar of the market in here, but we rallied today. I didn't look and see exactly where we closed because I was getting ready to come on. But we closed green today. We closed green today in the SPY. We closed green today in the QQQs. Do I think that holds? Peep? No, I don't. I do not. But people like to buy the dip. If you were buying the dip all of 2021, you made money in strong stocks, long stocks, uh, uh, the market. Pretty much anything, you could have bought the dip in 2021 and made money. It was a very easy year to do particularly swing trades. That was not a normal environment. That was not a normal market. That is not going to work this year. It already has not. 
But in my mind, buying the dip is not a philosophy or a strategy that you should use overall to ever, ever trade. You know, you have to think about it like not like your Warren Buffett where you have XYZ amount of money that you can just risk and wait until it stops dropping. People that are buying the dip right now are basically buying stuff that's falling. And again, I don't think this rally today holds at all. In fact, we could lose it tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to lose it tomorrow. I won't know to like it up, but we could. We could. So again, many traders have been buying the dip from 2021, thought, well, this is working, and then all of a sudden they get up and it doesn't work one day, which obviously was the beginning of January this year. But you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everyone does. Why? Many, many reasons, but people just do not have consistent gains. It's not about sometimes it's worked. So sometimes buying the dip in the market works, sure. Does it work consistently more than it loses? No, no, and that is the whole point. Because as an individual trader, if you want to make money, you have to make money more than you lose. So let's talk about this. We were talking about momentum, and I mentioned this stock earlier, CVX, okay? CVX has been on a tear. This is Chevron. This is a daily chart. Just go back to, again, this is an oil stock. Just go back to here, the beginning of 2022. See where the stock price was here? Approximately in January, beginning of the year, it was roughly at around 120 took off like a rocket, almost got up to 180, was at 17, almost at 175, almost right up at 175 in this rally. Show a really, really nice move in this. This is momentum. This is buying. This is buying. So the stock got bought. Where is the momentum in this? To the upside. To the upside. So how would you have made money in this? You would have made money going long. And we did go long. We went long calls in here. We didn't go long at the beginning of the year but we did go long in the last few weeks, okay? So again, this is momentum, it's up, okay? The price is moving higher, and again, it's moving in a big way, okay? And any questions, I don't, I actually can't see the questions. I can see the chat, Jeff. I don't know why I can't see the questions. I can't see any questions at all, but I can see the chat. <laughs> Uh, it's in the questions console, but we don't have a lot of questions. Oh, okay. Um, we have a question that wasn't answered before. But if you do have questions for Melissa, go ahead and type them in either through YouTube or um, in the GoToWebinar, and I'll pass them along to you, Melissa. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's talk about how do we find momentum? How do we find it? How do we find it? My strategy to find momentum is gaps. Okay. So... Long story short, I'm always looking for momentum to trade because if I don't see that momentum is going to come in and grab hold of the stock and push it down that I can short it or help it go up so I can go long, I don't want to do it. We talked about that earlier. I don't want to scalp something, okay? But anyways, what is my strategy? My strategy is gaps. Why gaps? Why am I looking for gaps? Because that's where the momentum is. That's where the momentum is. So if I see a gap, I'm looking at it to try to spot and find the momentum. So what is a gap? Let's go over it. This is a chart of the SPY. Again, this is ETF for the S&P. I'm going to just go back here. There's a lot of gaps here. Oh, no, let's go to this one. Let's go to this one here at the beginning of February. The SPY closed here, gap down. So what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Closed here, opened here, fell. You could have shorted this. So a gap is the difference between the close of the open. The market always closes at what time? Four o'clock. And it always opens where? At 9.30 in the morning Eastern time. So if you have the price open lower, that is a gap down. What about gap ups? Do you have gap ups? Yes. Here's a gap up. Market closed at four o'clock here, open here at 9.30, gapped up, rally. Gapped up again here, rally. So this is a gap up. This is a gap down. Again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Here's another one over here. This was January. Closed here at four o'clock, boom. Open higher at 9.30, tried to rally, then lost it the next day, boom. Gap down. So here's a gap up, here's a gap down. Here was the start of the sell-off that went like this. Do, do, do. Okay, here again is a momentum to the downside. So momentum comes in in gaps. Okay, so that's why I'm looking for them. Here is another one here, Facebook. Again, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Closed up here, opened down here, fell. 
So again, closed here, open here, fell. This is Facebook, this was earnings. So Facebook had earnings this, this night. night. It, it was, was above 320. 320. Then all of a sudden the next day, in, in the, the morning, morning, a stock bombed. It, it was, was at 240. This, this is a rather a large gap. gap. Again, where is momentum? In the gap, and then it sells off. And that's what happened here. So gaps are very, 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 very powerful, okay? There are some bullish gaps up here too. We didn't do these, we did this one here. So the point I'm trying to make is you only need one good thing to make money. You find momentum, you only need one good trade a day to make money, but you could do it as a day trade and an option. You could do two trades, the same stock in two different ways. You could do a swing trade too, or you could just do one trade a day whatever you want to do. It's the same system, the same idea, the same concept, looking for momentum, getting the big move. Again, it's not scalping. Think about it. If you get a dollar move in something, or you could do four trades to get 25 cents each, again, your odds go down the more you trade. Your odds go down the more trades you take. The idea is slimming it down. It's trying to like, I'm trying to hit a bullseye every day. Can I hit a bullseye every single day from 9.30 to four? No, nobody could. That's crazy. I can hit a bullseye between 9.30 and 10 a.m. And that's what I'm looking to do it five times a week. But the idea of trading for six and a half hours a day, bullseye, 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 bullseye. I'm not saying that's impossible. I'm saying that's highly unlikely. And when would it be possible on days, for example, when the market power trends? We have had some days like that actually this year. It's very, very, very rare that the market power trends in one direction for the entire day. When it does, you could do every single thing that's falling or every single thing that's rallying with the market. The market might power trend four, five, six times a year. It's rare. It's rare. That's the only time you get to hit a bullseye all day from 9.30 to 4. And even then, you better get the direction right in the market when you're reading it because most stocks will go with the market on any given day. Okay? So I look for a way every morning using my system, which I use a checklist to make the picks because I'm trying to find one thing. That's it. That's, that's the whole point. You only need one thing that moves and a method and structure to enter and exit the picks. Now let's talk about some day trades that we did here. Remember, we were talking about momentum. Here's another one. Just quickly, quickly, quickly looking at this without even thinking about anything at all. You can see from November, the stock was above 200 all the way back here. Fell off a cliff, again, has lost more than half its value since here we are in March. So the momentum was what? Selling. Selling pressure, okay? Something can't go from 200 to 95 without selling. It's the only way it's going there. It's going down, okay? And again, this is a nice, nice move. No matter what day you played it, how you played it, however you played it. Now, we ended up doing a day trade here. I know this doesn't look like much, but actually was a nice trade. Stock close to your gap down, boom, we shorted it, got out. We chunked it. This was a day trade. I'm going to show it to you here. This is a one minute, okay? It was on 3-2. There's 3-2 here. Oh, here, 3-2. See, th this is a one minute, so these bars are really, really tiny. We shorted it, got in, got the drop. Again, here's the momentum, got the drop into the morning. Remember I was telling you between 9.30 and 10, that's when I'm trying to focus. Get the drop, boom, out, done. So the trade we did, the day trade, and I run a lot of trading room. If you'd like a trial, you can email me if you'd like a trial for the rest of the week, but we entered and shorted it at 117.50. With 800 shares, your risk was 3,040. You do not have to risk that. You could risk less, a third of that if you want. Added, we added at what same price, 117.50. Total share, 1,600. Average price then was the same, 117.50. Exit, 114.75. Profit was $4,400. So this was a beautiful move. Again, almost $3. Remember, we're talking about momentum. This is momentum. This is selling. This is to the downside. We shorted it. Again, you're not trying to get in and out for 30 cents. You're trying to get in and out for three bucks in a stock like this. And what's so interesting, we're going to go back to the daily, is that's this. This may not look like anything at all, but if you take it over here and you get in with a good entry at a perfect, perfect timing, boom, and you get the drop. Again, that was a short, okay? 
So in the live trading room, I'll call the entry, I'll call the stop, I do use stops. Now let's talk about BA. BA, again, we were discussing momentum, we were discussing what's happening with different things. I didn't look at where this was today. We've done shorts in this. We did a short in this here on 228. Even this, this is a one minute chart, and, and actually I'm gonna go show you the daily in a second. We shorted this, we got in and out. I try to do my day trades fast, boom, in and out. We shorted this, got in and out, and made money right in here, 228. Now let's find 228 on the daily. We shorted that day. The day that it flipped, it was because there was a Fed, some kind of Fed minutes or something that happened that day. It actually flipped that day, fell the next day, boom. But this particular day, we did as a day trade, we were in, out, mm, and we booked it, and we shorted it, and we got out. Again, the momentum I knew was to the downside. We did puts then to get this drop, but we did a day trade here on 228. What did it do? It gapped down. Stock close here, gapped down. And here was the short, right in here. Okay. So we entered it at 198.50. Shares was 1,500, risk was 2,700, exit was 196.90. Again, you take it, you get in, get out. A buck 50, buck 60, get it down, profit 2,400. Every single trade that you take, you should try to make one to one. Instead of making one tenth, okay, or one twentieth, your goal should be one to one. If you're risk 1,000, you're looking to make 1,000. You're risking 500, you're looking to make 500. That's worth trading. That's worth taking on the risk. Do you understand? To me, it just doesn't make sense to take on the risk because every time you put a trade on, you're taking on the risk. What do I mean by risk? I mean the possibility the trade could lose. It can either stop you out, it could go against you. The reward has to be possible to do it and get the money, the money, which is what you're looking for, close to 100%, one turnaround of it. But the whole point I'm trying to make is that if you can predict the momentum, if you can predict, predict what somebody's going to do before it does it, whether rally up or fall, then you can make money. Then you can make man, money, okay? And that is the whole idea of what we're trying to do and how am I able to predict it and pinpoint it? Well, this is where I, I have a niche. I'm looking for the gap, but not every gap works. So most things gap on any particular day. There's thousands of things that gap every day. Can you trade every gap? No, you can't. I'm looking for gaps that are created by large institutional money. So gaps are created by large institutional money. That is what makes the gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. So I'm looking for what? Big, big money. What do I mean by large institutional money? Big buying, big selling. Okay, lots of buying and lots of selling. So again, if you're a hedge fund, you come in, you're coming in and taking a big position. It's like a big footprint that comes into the stock. You saw that with the Facebook, okay, after the earnings. So we're looking to follow the footprints of institutional money that come in in a stock. Because guess what? They create the momentum because they're taking the big positions. The big positions are made with what? Money. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Okay? Lots of it. So, we were kind of talking about this a little bit here. We were talking about how much money do you need and what kind of returns can you earn. It really depends if you want to day trade or do options. If you want to do options, you can open up a cash account with $2,000 minimum. If you want to do day trades, you need a margin account. You have to go to a broker and find out what their margin account requirements are. A retail broker is going to require you to have 25 grand to trade on margin daily, in and out, in and out. Or you can go to a prop place, in which case they probably require you with 5,000. You have to find out there's different places that you can trade. If you want to be active, then you need a margin account. There's just no way about it. If you don't want to be active or you just want to do options, you can open up an options account. You can still do a couple trades a week and you can still make money. But the idea is flipping it around. 50% is good in an auction. Option 100% is my goal. And I'm looking for one to one when I'm doing a day trade. Now, again, we've been talking about options too. Let's talk about some options trades. This again was the Facebook. Again, big money for whatever reason. Again, I don't follow fundamentals. I'm not watching the news every second of the day. I have it on the background. But if you get ingrained in trying to make decisions on what's going to happen with Russia and Ukraine, nobody knows. Nobody knows. You can make your assessments. It changes by the minute. So look at the price 
Look at the daily. All these charts in I here I have in here are the daily, okay? Daily, daily, daily. This is a daily chart of Facebook. So what did Institutional Money do with Facebook on this particular day? Sold it. They tanked it. Tanked it down. Again, the stock closed up here above 320. I don't know what the exact close was here. And tanked. Okay, basically sold off almost 100 points in the gap. Okay. Now, before that, though, we actually did an options trade before that, which was a put. 113 I called Facebook 330 puts it expired 121 I have an options newsletter the trades come emailed to you I sent this out 10 17 in the morning on the 13th so let's take a look at the daily the daily of Facebook was here take it to the right 330 so I called it right basically at the strike again for an expiration date of the 21st again how do you make money trade the momentum okay here is the drop Boom, boom. Again, we did the 330 puts. It went down, 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 down. You see this? And this was before this, actually. So, oops. The trade was the cost of the Facebook puts, which was at the money, $3.80. Three contracts cost $1140. Sold at 12. Profit $2,460 with an $1140 risk. Pretty good trade. 216% return on investment. This is in and out, in and out. You take it, get the momentum, get out. And actually this trade was up nicely since the beginning. You let it slide on down. Again, it's selling. And when I'm doing my options, it's the same philosophy. It's the same philosophy. I'm playing momentum, I'm playing the gap. I'm playing buying, I'm playing selling, whatever's happened to be, I'm looking for the institutional money. I'm not worried about pennies, about my fill of saving a couple of pennies of this or time value or anything like that. I'm looking for the momentum to come in pretty quickly to take it in my direction, whatever I happen to do. And I'm doing the weeklies, okay? I'm doing the weeklies. It's the same concept, same philosophy, cheaper way to play the stock, particularly something like this at this price point rather than a margin. And again, I can hold overnight when I'm doing options, which is a benefit of options versus doing the day trades. Although I like both. I like both. I like to do both. Uh, let's go over Netflix. Here was another gap. Stock closed here, gap down. This was a Netflix here. This was right before the earnings. It was around 520-ish. Boom. Gap down the next day here, under 400. Again, institutional money tanked it, sold it, sold the gap down, sold the chart down again. Why? Who knows? Who cares? It doesn't matter. It fell. This was a gap down. And a crushing gap it was, actually. Okay? This was way back. Uh, in the middle of January. We did do a put on the exact same day on the 13th of January here. This closed here, this gap down. We entered puts in Netflix there. They were the 520s. Same day, it was the 13th in the morning, expired of the 21st. Now, the earnings came out the night of the 20th. I did not hold this trade through the earnings. Why? What if they had been, what if the stock had gapped up? went up to $650, I didn't know, and the trade was profitable beforehand. So this trade was a 78% return on investment with an exit on 120 before the earnings. You could have uh, spent 1350 and sold it for 24 and made 78% return investment. That's a good trade. I put this here. The close of the option on the last day of expiration was 125 because of what it did, and you could have risked 1350 and made 11,150. I did not hold that. I, you know, the trade was there if you wanted to. But when you hold to the very last day, which I never tell people to do, you always take the risk, the trade could completely go against you. If, if I'm down in a trade, for example, I'm down in the trade, it's the last day, I'm already down, I have nothing to lose, I'm already down in the trade, then I'll hold the last day. But I typically do not hold the last day if I'm already up. In this case here, it really worked in your favor. Really worked in your favor. Why? Because again, I called the 520 puts. A put is a short, and the stock was here before the earnings and the next day was at 400 and that is why that trade was worth at the close not even the high of the options the next day on the 21st it was worth uh 125 again i don't know if anybody did that on my newsletter or not but it was there it shows you the power of the gap though it is a great example of the power of institutional money the power of the gap, the power of how much money you can make. For example, what you could have done, again, I did not do this because the trade was up, but what you could have done, oops, where was I here, Netflix, 
you could have taken two contracts, got out of one, booked it, kept the other one on, and you could have just kept it on into the earnings to see what would happen. You could have done that. So you could have split it, you know, knowing that the earnings was coming out that night, which it was. Let's talk about the SPY. Again, momentum, momentum, momentum. What's been happening the SPY? Selling. So we did that same day, same day, same time. 471 SPY puts expired the same day too. 340 was the cost of this one on this particular day. Risk was 1,020, sold at $24. Profit 6,180, return on investment 606. Again, this was momentum to the downside. So we're going all the way back here. January 13th, we did puts. Take it to the right. We did them at the money. Boom, got the drop. Boom, got the drop. Here's the drop. Again, selling momentum to the downside. Huge trade. It was never, never, never down. Never down, never down, never down. No money management really needed even in this one. Get out wherever you want. It was a beautiful injury. Again, we, you, you, options are about capturing it, the timing and getting the direction right and the timing that you can decide, even like with the Netflix, if you want to hold it, get out of some, split it, do whatever. That was a nice call. And again, you can risk more than this. You can do more. Any questions here so far? So when you're looking to trade, again- Melissa, yeah, we do have a few questions. Okay, go ahead. Um, 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 somebody wanted to know when you look for, when, do you look for a certain size gap down when you're looking for gaps? No, Is not certain, necessarily. Like, no, yeah, no, I do not. I know everyone wants it to be black and white where they can just plug it into a, uh, plug it into a scanner and go boop. No, I do not. As you can see, we traded Facebook, we traded Netflix, and then we also traded them in days where the gaps weren't big. So no, it's not like that. It's not like you just okay. say, well, everything's down or up 10% or whatever it isn't. It's not that easy. Every single day and every single gap and every single chart is in its unique own planet. Like tomorrow morning I get up, I look at exactly what I'm looking at for the thing I'm looking at. I, I, I look at and analyze every one like its own different day. All right. And then we had another question about how often do you find uh, the gaps actually fell? I have about an 80% win ratio. So that means if you take 10 trades with me, eight are gonna win and two are gonna lose. So that's pretty much that's, my win ratio for losses and wins. That sounds pretty good. That's, and also that catches up with the questions. So okay. thank you. Anyways, getting back to goals. If you have a goal, I find it easier for people to break it down. Like some people say, well, I wanna make this much money a year. And then they're overwhelmed by that. Chunk it out, break it down. Break it down monthly, weekly, daily. It's going to be a lot easier for you to hit your goals if you can wrap your head around it. A lot of times people are losing for so many years, they can't even wrap their head around the idea of even making any money at all. So go and back it off and set a weekly goal for yourself. Say, I want to make $2,000 this week. Then next week I want to make $2,500. Then after that I want to make $3,000, whatever you want to do. If you can just break it down and chunk it out, you will get to the point 3,000 one week, 3,000 the next week, 3,000 the next week. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I just made $9,000 in three weeks. And that I find that's a lot easier for people to comprehend. It's a lot easier for people to wrap their head around the concept of chunking out profits rather than constantly just being heavy handed, like I said, where you're trading every single solitary day or all day. But success or failure, you know, if you've been trading for a while, you know this really has to do with the quality of your system. And if you're losing, you probably don't have a good trading system. You probably don't have anything that makes any money. Like we take trades that sometimes we're just looking for a normal move, but sometimes you get these huge trades. The spy was one of them. And the reality is you will have those trades if you're looking for momentum to get the momentum for the reasons I explained earlier about institutional money. You're never gonna have big wins like that if you're only always scalping stuff. And then what happens is it doesn't cover the losses. So you must have a niche if you want to get ahead, particularly in trading, because all trading is, is you're taking money from somebody else. It's a zero sum game. You are taking money from another person on this planet when you make money. You're not, you're not knitting socks and selling the socks out to people to put on their feet. You aren't creating anything, okay? You are you're going into the market and you're taking risk. The smartest person wins. The one that gets it right is the only one that gets the cash. 
So you got to be right more than you're wrong. You got to be the smartest person in the room. And that's one of the reasons I follow institutional money because that money has a lot going for it. It is what you would want to call the smart money. They are making decisions based on lots of things. They have connections to the administration. They have political connections. They know what's happening overseas in global markets. They are paying for research reports. They are investing billions of dollars, okay? People are right now, institutions are not buying this market. It is, is not happening. I don't care that we rallied today. Institutions aren't buying this market here. And that's why we're lower. But the reality is that my niche looks for that institutional money in the gap and if you want to win and get ahead, you have to have a niche because everybody's trying to fight for the same thing, which is the cash, which is the money. And again, we're not producing anything. We're taking money from some other person. Could be the neighbor, could be the guy next door, okay? This is an independent activity. It's, you know, it's a winner takes all kind of philosophy. And we did talk about this. We did talk about CVX. And what I found so interesting just teaching people for as long as I have is traders have such a difficulty understanding momentum. They're scared of it, they don't get it, they don't boot it. That, I mean, think about it, it's common sense. It's common sense, it's also common sense that you can't go with the crowd. It's common sense even going with institutional money. It's common sense with going with big money, big positions, momentum, volume, okay? So the big money that I'm looking for pinpoints the direction of the footprints of institutional money and gaps. That's my system, it's a rating system I use every morning and it's not based on percentages at all. If it was that easy, you plug it into a system and you could just not even think on any day. Again, what do I mean by institutional money? It could be up like CVX, which is buying. It could be down like Facebook, which is selling and, or shorts. Institutional money can short a stock too. Okay, they can take short positions, hedge funds as well. Again, Netflix was to the, the downside. Again, could be a big gap, could be a small gap. We play this little tiny baby one, it was profitable. Same thing in Facebook, this one was too. So it's whatever you want to get, but gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. Okay, thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. That power that comes in allows you to risk and take two, 3,000 shares or 10 contracts and still make a couple grand. So you don't have to take 50,000 contracts in a penny stock, which is absurd. And I don't trade penny stocks or low float stocks and they're junk. And the only way you can make a lot of money is to get big positions and then you can't get in and out right. And they don't have the volume. It's, it's crazy to do that. And people that do that are scalping it anyways. We want to be like a dot. Like you're taking a position in Apple and no one even knows they're there and you can have 5,000 shares of it and no one even knows they're there. You are a dot in that stock. It's the idea that you're following the institutional money. Again, we go long, we short. I do prefer to short, and I found that's a niche for myself as well, because for some reason, most retail traders like the idea of buying low and selling high, which is why they buy the dip. It does not work consistently to make money. And the, and the head fake right now for people, while they're struggling since the beginning of this year, for people that do that, is that it has not worked this year, but it did work last year. And people thought they knew how to make money, and they don't. But overall, if you've been trading for five, six, eight, ten years, even when the market was bullish, even since the run-up, like I said, in the last couple of years, it did not work all the time consistently even then. And it just doesn't. You're not a long-term investor, Warren Buffett, buying and holding forever, and you don't care where it falls to. You're still in it, and you're suffering through the drop. You can't do that as an individual trader. Your goal is to make money consistently every day or a couple of times a week or whenever you want to trade it. The idea is to chunk it out, to get somewhere by in, out, in, out, not taking it and holding, holding, holding forever. Okay, I'm not even doing leaps, which are long-term options, which actually you could do. I think uh, one person particularly that's on my options newsletter took a trade, I called it and took it out longer than a leap, but he got out of it. But again, I find I'm, it's very easy to predict. For example, like if you said to me, what are you having for dinner tonight? I'd say I'm having chicken. If you said, what are you having dinner, Melissa, a week from Tuesday? I'd say, I have absolutely no idea what I'm having dinner a week from now. You, it's very easy to, to look in the short term, in the short term pre to predict where something's gonna go than when looking in the longer term. Like, again, I'm giving you an overall general analysis telling you the volatility is going to continue into the summer of 2022. If you said to me, Melissa, between now and the end of 2022, are we going to make a new high in the market? I can't tell you yes or no. That's too far away. You know, that's nine and a half months away. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about picking the bottom. Don't worry about picking the top. 
play it for what it is. When you get it, when you get the moves and the momentum, you take the trade, put the risk on, and get out. That's your job as a trader. Your job is just to make money, not predict, you know, what's going to happen with Russia. Okay, nobody can predict that stuff. So, anyways, if you want to do this, you have to make good choices. That means a plan of action, using a system, good entries, do not over trade. And, and then, then chunk it out when you're making your goals and don't be afraid to take stops. I do use stops in my day trades. I don't use stops in my options because there's no need to because the risk is the stop. And back it off if you feel like you want to kill an option. If you take a trade, that means you don't believe in it. Back off your risk. I'd rather see people take it and hold it through. But either way, if you want to make in this business as a day trader or an active trader or a swing trader or options trader, you've got to win. You've got to win more than you lose. That's the only way to consistently get anywhere with this. And that's why you've got to have also some nice big gains. And that means you need the momentum. So what helps me with this is the strategy I do that I use. Now we were talking about win ratios at year to date this year. I'm 78% day trading in the day trading room win ratio and 87% in options. We are just not losing in our options trades at all this year. I have been really on point with calling the market. Again, I'm telling you right now, the, the, the rally today isn't going to hold. Whether we lose it tomorrow, whether we lose it Thursday, whether it's Monday afternoon, I don't know. But I know it's not going to hold. So again, money management counts, but getting the direction right is critical. It's critical. And I think sometimes people will do something that works and they think it works all the time or they think it's a system or a strategy, but it's really not. Again, Look for a good return on investment and a good risk when you're trading and look for correct trade selection. What do I call it? Calculated risk. You say, okay, I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna calculate it. I know this trade could lose, but I believe it's going to work. And why do I believe it's gonna work? Again, these are the types of things that you have to work through. For me, it is the price it is the price of it, the price action, not the fundamental backings of it. I'm not reading what's happening on the earnings. What did they say about Netflix? Why did it gap down? I don't know, I don't care. I'm looking at the charts. I had the charts in here today. We talked about the daily. Trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutions because they're moving stocks, they're moving the market. If they wanna buy something, they'll buy it, like Chevron. If they wanna dump something like Facebook and dump it, it's gonna fall. That's it. You don't want to be against those positions because you're going to lose. Even if temporarily you think you're in the right direction, you, you're going to lose overall. Being on the side of institutions increases your odds to make profits because institutions make stock trends end with the market. Institutions either move stocks up or down. That's the only way you can go. If you want to get paid, then the key is to be in the trade with the large directional moves. And you've got to be with the power of money. Again, this is very important. So if you go where the power of money is flowing, you'll get the momentum. Why does this matter? So you know what direction to take the position. That is how you're going to make money. And then you get the big move. I'm very deliberate with my choices. Again, I'm giving you my market call here right now. No ifs, ands, or buts, okay? You take the trade, you put the money on, you get conviction, you be deliberate, you do it. What's, what happens if you're wrong? If you're wrong, like I said, 20% of the time I lose. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You're losing that trade. It's not the end of the world. You set your risk accordingly. No one should ever be risking their whole account in one trade or two trades anyways, okay? So you have to say, okay, I have this much cash. I'm going to divide it by and I'm going to do this many trades a day or this many trades a week or one trade a day or whatever you're going to do. Keeping in mind the idea that you're going to win 8 out of 10. But it's the conviction that helps you, particularly like I might call a trade. I might call a trade in something and then it goes against me the day I call it. And then poof, it goes the next day in my direction. You can't kill it. You can't kill it. Again, this is why keeping your risk a set amount that you can stay with it, believe in it, hold it. These markets are very choppy. There's very, 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 very choppy. We're going to see that tomorrow. We're going to see that when the Fed talks tomorrow. And again, it's really not going to be the rate high because we everybody knows it's going to be a quarter percent. They're not going to raise it a half a percent right now. It's happening overseas, but it's going to be what they say, what they say tomorrow, pinpointing, are they going to raise them even more? How many times this year, later in the year, now that this is going on? That's going to be critical for the market because if the market sees something it doesn't want to see, it's going to sell off tomorrow after two. But the idea of making money has to do with a system you do over and over in any market conditions with the consistency, and then you do need a, a plan of action. But I think it's breaking it down 
to make goals for yourself by having a plan. I'm very big with paper. I like to write. I buy those notebooks like at Target and I write stuff all the time. Writing, writing, writing. We are in an electronic world and sometimes people get caught up when they're training like they're playing you know, a, a computer game. This is not that. This is real money. It's money you work for, money you want to put to good work, and you can put it to good work. My God, even the rates have gone up. Savings rates are like 0.0004%. It's ridiculous. You, you, you can make money in the market, but you have to be thoughtful about what you're doing. So again, if you want to come and learn from me, what will you learn? You will learn my 26-point checklist. It's my system. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have a high probability. We're looking for high. Like, I think this is worth doing. It's worth taking the risk. I really think it's going to work. High probability, not gambling, of directional bias for the entire day. Big move in the day. Gotta have it. Early confirmation of the bias, a move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow-through, and a good risk-to-reward target potential. So one strategy, in my mind, is all you need to be successful. You can do it for swing trades, options, or day trades. But you don't need a general overall broad-based view of the market to make money. And in fact, a lot of that's a waste of time. You know, you can learn how to read institutional money in the price patterns without having to follow the fundamentals. If that reinforces the trade decision for you, fine. But if it, if it messes you up in the head to kill a position or not take a position or something like that, then it's bad to look at the fundamentals because very often they don't match what's happening in the technicals. You could have terrible earnings and a huge gap up. You could have, you know, a beautiful, fabulous earnings and a big gap down. One doesn't necessarily go with the other. It's very similar to the economy and the stock market. You may have bad economic data and the market gaps up and rallies or vice versa. So again, you might see exactly what the market expects tomorrow as far as the interest rates, but the market may sell off anyways. It may sell off anyways, or it may, it may go, the rates may go up, and then the market may rally tomorrow when the Fed talks. And you say, why is the market rallying when rates are going up? That shouldn't be happening, but it could be something else they say. We, no one knows. I'm not predicting what the Fed says tomorrow. I do not know. Tomorrow's going to be a wild day. But it's the idea of waiting and seeing the price action, seeing what happens when it happens to know where to go to take the position to get in and get out. So what will you learn from me if you want to come and learn from me? A way to pick the best gap to play each day. That's very critical. A way to find and spot and play momentum. Again, very important to make money. You only need one trade that would day to make money. And I don't care if it's an option or a day trade. And, and again, that means less trades means less losses, which means more wins. So you will learn the 26-point checklist from me. That's the meat and potatoes. Uh, people are doing very well with me. I've been getting a lot of nice testimonials. And again, as I said at the beginning of the lecture, I am really shocked. I started to ask people just this year, what do you do for a living, you know, Mr. So-and-so? I, I, I find it very interesting how people are trading while they're working full-time. People are doing all kinds of things that they've never done before. Um, and I just really find it very interesting. So, I mean, I can't count out that anyone could do this, really. It's, it's the concept, it's the idea. You can't risk more than you can lose, but people are really, really doing well this year. I think people are looking for something that works. And again, 2021 was an easy year to go long. It's not the case anymore. And so people now are looking for something else to do. The fact that I'm an expert in shorting is just a caveat. I'm very good at reading gaps. So again, we will go long the market again. I'm not going long here today. It doesn't make sense, but we will again. I'm not predicting when. Again, that's like trying to predict what I'm going to have for dinner a week from now. I do not know and I do not care. It's the idea of trading today and trading tomorrow and making money each and every single day when we're doing it. So education is important. Yes, there's a cost. The cost is not just the cost of the education, it's the cost of your time. For me, it's an entire weekend taking the class, but it's an investment in your future if you want to learn. And you're far better off knowing what to do and having a mentor than trading on your own, particularly in these types of markets. But you've got to be serious about it. And again, that means taking the time, processing the information, not gambling, and really learning from someone and then taking direction where you can bounce questions off of someone and ask them. Do you, what do you think? What do you think of this, Melissa? What's the target? Things like that. Anyways, the class I teach, I teach once a month. It's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock in the live day and take the entries and exits. The class teaches you how to read institutional position in stocks, which is very important. And the Golden Gap Course teaches you how to day trade gaps. That is what I do. 
Um, and the purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So I go through the checklist in the morning. Now, if you sign up for the options newsletter, it's not a class, it's a newsletter. You get the trades emailed to you live, it's options trades. The day trade room is again a day trade room. I, I'm rating the gaps in the room. I'm rating the gaps for the letter. You're just getting the trade call if you sign up for the letter. If you want to do the class, um, the the system class is March 26th and 27th, 9 to 5. Class is online. Cost of the class is $69.99. Email me if you want to sign up. You cannot sign up through the website. I'm doing a webinar special. Be signed up by Friday. You get the trading room free to the end of 2022. This is a great offer. Um, if you would like a trial for the room this week, email me. There's three days left. You can come in the room for the trial. Um, you can have a free trial then until the end of this week. Now, if you want to just do options, I have a 12-month subscription for $69.99 and a six-month subscription for $49.99. Again, this is for um, options trades only. And again, if you want a trial, you can email me. Any questions here? I think I've made the time. Any questions towards the end here? Yeah, uh, we do. <laughs> um, Let's see. One of the questions we have, you were talking about minimum float and minimum volume. Do you have like a, a recommendation around minimum float and minimum volume? I would not trade anything with less than 300,000 volume. That's not a rule. That's just a general, my general experience is don't trade anything with less than 300,000 average volume of the day. Okay. Uh, Cynthia in YouTube wants to, has the following comment, and I don't know if you'll have a but here's what she says. Barclays halted creating new shares of VXX and oil yesterday. Do you have any idea what that means? Wait, say that again? Say that again? Uh, Barclays halted creating new shares of both VXX and oil yesterday. I didn't read anything about that, but my general take on what's happening as far as big institutions in reference to oil stocks is that they see that oil prices are going to go higher. That's my general analysis of what I've read as far as things. And I was in a webinar with an institution about two weeks ago. They were not buying equities and they also are bullish on oil. What she just said about Barclays, I didn't see. If she wants to email me the article, I can read it and give you my analysis. But I know that the stock fell today in CBS. Yes, we, we have the chart in here. here. I, I would, would not, not be a bit surprised if it flips, flips around between now and the end of next week. So that's, that's my take, take on it. In other words, I wouldn't be shorting those stocks. Okay. Sid wants to know if only large institution can create gaps. Is that correct? No, you saw with the with the rise of Reddit in the last year where you saw a big moves that happen in I'm gonna just talk about GME. GME had a spike up, and I'm not going to go detail the controversy with that. It happened twice. Since then, the stock has flatlined or sold off. People are waiting for that to pop again. It may never, ever, ever happen. So that is a once-off. Could something like that occur again as a once-off where retail traders create a move in a stock? Yes. Is that something happens on a regular basis every single day? No, it doesn't. And what you saw with GME is what has happened with some of the ones that they have made that moves you don't get any follow through. GME is basically dead. It's flatline. No one's touched it with a 10 foot pole if you look at it. Okay. That is the extent of the questions. So uh, thank you. Good job. Great. Thanks so much for having me. Email if you want to try it. You know, if you're interested in the class. Thank you, Jeff. Have a great night, everyone. Stay safe. All right. Thank you, Melissa.